morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to the webinar. Uh, my name is Chloe Gordon. I am the GM of the clinical business here at Evident. And today we're going to be talking about how to choose the right 3D printer for your clinic. And joining us today is Kai Oshiro, uh, president of Simply 3D Hawaii. Uh, and he is going to be <laughs> uh, helping us you know, navigate you know, the confusing and you know, busy waters of Dental 3D printing. Thanks, thanks for joining us today, Kai. Thank you so much for having me this morning, Chloe. All right, um, it's going to be a great conversation. Um, so probably, or one of the things I should say that I really appreciate about Kai, and you'll feel this too uh, through this webinar, is the obvious like love and passion that you have, Kai, about uh, 3D printing. You know, probably, you know, the, since I met you, uh, you could feel that, you know, you love this business. That's why you're in it, because you want to make dental kind of more accessible, not as confusing and intimidating as, as it is um, for dentists. And that, that's, that's, that's a noble mission. But um, I'm going to pass this over to you. And why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, Simply 3D Hawaii? Awesome. Thank you so much, Chloe, for, um, for bringing us on. Uh, Simply 3D Hawaii was founded um, last year, um, about November, actually, yeah, one year ago exactly, um, in 2020. Um, this company was launched uh, shortly after I came back from Afghanistan from a one-year deployment. And uh, when I was in quarantine, uh, I, I 3D printed nonstop. I, I've had a, a desktop printer for about five years. And that's what I did for, for my 14-day quarantine. And the thing that um, I realized was the biggest problem stopping the implementation of 3D printing on a, on a massive scale is um, workflow and technical support, right? So many people know it can do great things, but it fails. Like the dirty secret about 3D printing is there's far more failures, especially in the beginning, than successes. And when you have a failure, it's so hard to, to understand what went wrong, right? Was it the printer? Was it the resin? Was it the curing? You know, was it the design? And so when I realized that, and when I realized what, when I wanted to start a company, we decided from the ground up, we we're going to be a service and support center. And Simply 3D um, Hawaii was formed um, with the basis of service, um, with service. And we became the first company that I know of in the entire country that is the official service center of every manufacturer that we carry. Uh, I'm certified by a SEGA. Uh, I'm the first third party company that I know of that Envision Tech slash Desktop Health um, certified to be um, an outside technician. I also have Desktop Metal, which is a huge um, company. I actually just bought um, Envision Tech. Uh, I also have XYZ Professional, Raise 3D, Creality, Flash Forge. Um, I have about eight, um, Shining 3D, I have about eight manufacturers that we represent and we are the official third party support for. Um, and in that context, um, specifically for, and why our, our name has Hawaii in it, um, is we, we focus on hands-on support um, with our, our clients directly. And that is the biggest missing point that, that we really wanted to do. And, and like you said, my passion comes in is solving those problems. When somebody buys a printer and then when they wanna make that first um, dental appliance, there's nothing more frustrating than being told the process, but then having like one thing like post-processing. It's like, I was told this thing could come super shiny and super clear, but when I'm doing it, it's all hazy. Like, and, and then having to go to like a Facebook group or a, a YouTube channel, like to figure out those little details that if someone was just there would take, you know, like two minutes to solve that problem um, versus hours and hours uh, looking online for those answers. So anyways, yeah, that's, that's, that's I was going to say that the support, like that just, it, it's such an important component of anything digital these days, right? Because everything fits together that uh, you need to have someone who really understands, you know, how it all works. And so I want to like jump into it. I know we're going to get a lot of questions. We already have a few here, but uh, let's bring up a quick poll uh, so we kind of see who's in our audience today uh, before before we jump into the question. So uh Simple. Are you currently 3D printing? Yes or no? And uh, let, let's get an idea of uh, who we have. And while we do that, I'm going to check out what we have here for some questions. All right. So a couple more seconds with uh, yes or no for printing. 
and let's let's jump into it. So, Kai, let's start at at the beginning. Uh, a doctor calls you up or comes into your shop and wants to start three D printing, but they they don't know where to start. Like, what what do you do? What what do you tell them? Or the where do you guide thing, them? The, the first thing I always do with our dentists is we like to understand their overall goal, right? Like it, this has to be based off of what you want to accomplish. Do you want to create uh, and manufacture in-house or do you want just a faster workflow or a more streamlined process? Uh, and for most dentists, it's a, um, it's a mix, right? And that's what's great about digital dentistry. You don't have to go all in on everything. You can go partway in on some things and you can use other people, labs, or even um, yourself um, on, uh, on fabrication for like liners to still use another part and do something that you don't want to do in-house. So I always ask, what is the true goal that you want to accomplish in 3D printing? The vast majority of dentists want simple things like dental models, um, bite splints, um, possibly, um, uh, I mean, so, some, some people like surgical guides, but it's basically the, the simplest things that they do, uh, impression trays, custom impression trays, the cost, like little things that um, they use on a day-to-day -day basis um, that they're comfortable with. Um, a lot of people still want labs to do the harder things, right? Like, um, like dentures, you know, even though you can fully do it, you know, most people just like, most of like, I don't want to take that risk on. I just want to do and, like a bite splinter or something. And they just don't know, right? And it, it comes back to that support and education piece. And so uh, that was a really good point where you said about the first question is like, what do you want to use it for, right? And that's probably, a, and that's what we, when we talk to doctors at the design centers and they always ask us about 3D printers, right? It's like, what do you want to use the printer for? And so they have their idea. They're like, I want to do bite splints. I want to do aligners or whatever it is. And then what questions should dentists be asking sales reps? You know, they're, you know how it works, right? There are people who get bombarded every day by different, different companies saying theirs are the best. You know, what are some key questions or some tips you can give our audience of what to ask to kind of shift through all kind of the murkiness and the sales pitches? The number one question that I would have all, dent uh, all dentists ask is who is my support? Who is responsible for picking up the phone if there's a failure? Um, the vast majority of salespeople um, that are presenting um, 3D printers to, um, to dentists, you know, uh, unfortunately they're, they're salespeople and they're not technicians, right? So almost everybody pushes the responsibility onto the consumer to call the manufacturer, right? So they're like, oh, you know, I have this failure. Um, you know, your bed probably wasn't level, call the manufacturer and ask the manufacturer how to do it. Or there's, here's a, here's a YouTube video on how to ensure your bed's level. But um, that is, that is putting the responsibility on the user, not on the, the, the person making the sale. So mm -hmm. always, always be clear about who is responsible for supporting me when it doesn't work, when I have that failure? And then what other resources do I have besides YouTube or a Facebook group to fix that? That is the most important thing to, to identify. The support, yeah, good call. I, I couldn't agree with you more, right? It's same with, you know, whether, you know, for scanners or designs, uh, it's how, when something goes wrong or you need to talk to somebody, uh, what kind of support are you gonna get and the, you know, the knowledge base that that, that company has. So and there's one more thing that I would bring up, Chloe. Yeah. Uh, and I found this out when I was doing my, um, my site surveys for my dentist when, when they first got me in. Um, mm -hmm. They need to ask, what are all the pieces of equipment needed for that product to maintain its FDA certification or the FDA clearance? Yeah. Many people will sell you the printer, um, but their curing station or their resin or something upwards in that chain or along that workflow chain wasn't certified. Um, some doctors, um, when I first talked to them, they bought um, a form a form two and they loved it, but they didn't buy for whatever reason the, the form two curing station or they used a, an Amazon curing station or something else. And when I went into their office and I saw that they were doing, you know, um, bite splints with it, you know, I, I told them you're not using the certified 
curing station. You're not using the certified process, and they invalidated it by by not not doing that. So just make sure um, whatever it is you buy that that salesperson is selling you the entire package from start to finish to make sure that that final product maintains that FDA clearance. And you touch on something really important that I feel people kind of gloss over a lot is kind of the FDA clearance on, on these workflows. So just to kind of recap what you're saying, right? It, it's the FDA approved the workflow. And so uh, when you're buying it, you got to kind of consider all those pieces and um, make sure that, you know, you're not breaking that workflow. Is that correct? Absolutely. And not only that, there's, as a dentist, you're taking on um, a couple layers of risk that you want to be clear about. So, uh, and, and let's talk about FDA um, clearance real quick. The FDA clearance is, is made for the manufacturers. It is not made for the dentist. So a, as a dentist, you don't have to use an FDA approved or cleared resin. You can actually use any resin that you want. The problem is if you as the dentist are basically prescribing that resin um, appliance to that patient. So let's say you use some generic um, clear um, uh, bite, splint, uh, uh, bite splint resin and it's not FDA clear. Can you do it? Absolutely. You can absolutely do that. But if that bite splint breaks in that person's mouth and they swallow it or any of that thing happens, then and there's an investigation. You as a dentist took all of that risk because you prescribed that resin to that patient. But if you use a FDA approved resin, then you can say, I prescribed something that was already cleared. And then you can put the responsibility of any of that damage onto that resin manufacturer because they, they certified it. Right. And then that resin manufacturer is going to say, all right, that was our, we're at fault, but they're going to check your curing stations. They're going to check your curing settings. They're going to check the printer you use it on. They're going to check the design that you use it on. And they're going to do all of these inspections um, to confirm that you maintained it. So right. again, to, to just wrap up, um, it is possible, but just know the risk that you're assuming when you put something in that, that person's mouth. That's an interesting, like the way you position that, like, so that FDA approval is kind of the protection for the manufacturer. Got it. Yeah, yeah um, that, that's exactly what it is. So it, it's, it's a manufacturer level thing. It's not a, a dent, it's not a dentist. It's not a user level thing. Got it, got it. Um, so what, interesting question here. So what's the most common support call uh, you get from dentists who are um, 3D printing? <laughs> Hands down, it's why did my print fail? <laughs> and, <laughs> and they're going to call me and they're going to be like, uh, I printed, I, I, I hit print and nothing came up. And there's like, there is so many things that could have caused that print to, to not work. Um, which is what why generally, what generally then once you do a bit of digging have you ever have you found the, the root cause <laughs> yes the root cause 99 percent of the time is user error i mean as as cliche as it sounds um it's things such as you know did you guys um set the do you have the right slicing profile for the resin that you're using mm -hmm. on what angle did you put the support on you know what angle did you place it i mean all all of the basic things that just goes it's just 3d printing fundamentals of 101 like like 3d printing 101 um is is failed and it's because um dentists don't have you know they they, they don't even want to learn this stuff they just want the product right they, they, they kind of just they say uh, I'm gonna have my I'm gonna have my my lab tech or my hygienist. I'm gonna have my hygienist, you know, do the scan, hit print, and have my hygienist do it. So even though I train the dentist, sometimes it doesn't get to the user level, which is why every printer that we install at a dental office, I get all the users there. I get every single staff. I even get the office manager there, and I teach all of them the basics of it because you know, a lot of times that that end user that's actually hitting print changes, and that's one thing as a dentist you want to do is is identify at least in the beginning one person to take on this learning curve because there is a slight learning curve but after that learning curve um and and, and you've done it for a couple of weeks then train other people got it got it and uh so you know we're talking about 
3D printers today, but you know, that's just one segment of a workflow, right? You need to scan, you need to design, and then you print. And do you find that people want to jump in and use that, you know, get everything at once? Or is it, you know, baby steps and you need to kind of to walk them through every, you know, every component? Some, I would say the vast majority want baby steps. Uh, the vast majority, um, the biggest fear dentists have is they don't want to take on technology that becomes a paperweight or worse, a burden for their staff, right? Like, like staff, like, you know, like I can only imagine how many Sarex doctors bought and said, this is the best thing in the world. And their staff got dropped in their lap. They're like, what do I do with all this stuff? Like I'm supposed to mill something now? I'm supposed to center something? Like, you know, so there's, um, there's, there's a lot of things that get, that, that gets pushed on from, uh, from, from person to person. But uh, the, the biggest thing, like you said, is, is it is one part of a bigger workflow. But the dentist that, like, there's a question over here. I want to do one day night guards. That is the number one thing that dentists want to do. Maybe not necessarily now, but at some point. And the way that you can do um, single day night guards is one, you got to be all digital. Like, you, you're not going to be able to do an impression, send it to a lab. Like, you have to have that scan. Two, and this is a big thing for evident and why I love Chloe and her team. You got to have a team that does the dental design quickly. Um, before Chloe, I, I was actually working with uh, another company um, in the mainland and they're great. Um, but the turnaround time was like three, three days, maybe four days. And that's not that bad. But if you want a one day turnaround for your bike split, which is the goal that everybody has, you need somebody with a design team that's working 24 six. <laughs> <laughs> is the, no, you gotta get the one day off but you, but you need that design because that design holds everything back right and and that is the biggest problem for a one day denture is is you gotta get the design back chloe and her team we've done several um, dent, um we did several boy spins already with your team super fast turnaround time super fast um, so you have to have the, the scan to, to them you have to have the, the, the design back then you have to print um, I'll, I'll be honest with you any major dental printer will have it done in, in near the same amount of time typically it's 45 minutes to as much as 90 minutes depending on how you do it so for most dentists you know that doesn't make a big a, that big of a difference um, but the, the biggest thing is the designer the designer is the number one person that's going to make or break that one day denture every other component, and the process, every hardware out there will do it. I mean, it doesn't matter which one you buy, every single one will, will be able to do it if that designer gets that file back in, a, in, in less than a couple of hours. Exactly. And, and I think what gets lost a lot of times is you need a, 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 a design file to make your printer work, right? And you can either you know send it out to a design center or spend the money and the time learning exocad or you know or three shapes so um if you do have any questions about our design services you can always reach out to myself or anyone at the evident team then we can help understand your workflow uh you know and build a custom solution based on what you're trying to do um so kai is there a profile of dentists that are successful with 3d printing uh you know more so than a than than someone else absolutely <laughs> that's funny question. absolutely um it's it's very the profile of a dentist like you're talking about the personality of a dentist that yeah, uh, like the profile like if someone calls and right away you're like oh man, this person doesn't stand a chance or you're like okay this person gets it absolutely the, the the biggest thing is i have several dentists that i work with that are phenomenal um the biggest thing is they have to have the will and the, the desire to figure something out. Um, because even with a perfect workflow where I'm, you know, we're saying, and, and we're, we're saying this is every single step you have to do, there's going to be failures. And we have to look at it as a, as a way that, that is like, how can we fix this? How can we solve? What was the fundamental problems? So the dentist, um, the, the, the best dentists are curious about it and they're at least willing to learn. If you strictly want somebody else to do it, um, that's fine. And that's why I'm very successful because I take the responsibility for my dentist. You know, I work with a lot of older dentists, you know, especially dentists that are, you know, like five or 10 years away from retirement. They're like, I don't want to learn anything new. I want to do this just 
you know, I'll call Kai and I have Kai deal with it. But that just, you know, makes things a little bit harder. If you, if you truly want to be successful, you have to understand you are manufacturing something. You are manufacturing a appliance, uh, an appliance in your office. So you have to be, you have to have the courage and the, um, uh, the patience to know that there's a learning curve and that you're going to have to make some tweaks. And, you know, ultimately you're going to have to be willing to roll up your sleeves and, and figure it out, you know, in tandem with, with, with us or other people in the industry. Yeah, no, no, I totally agree with you. You need to have that curiosity, not, not be afraid of having some, you know, failures along the way. And uh, it's okay. Yeah. It, it's okay. That that's part of the, the fun of it, I guess. <laughs> Um, it's, it's one of the quirks that becomes a charm, right? You know, you're like, right, oh, that, right, that's like yeah. a failure, you know? I, hey, I, I learned something. But once you have it dialed in, um, it, you can print. Like, we haven't had a failure in a while, you know? And, and, and like I said, 90% of the problems are user error. And once you figure out everything uh, and, and the nuances of what you're trying to do, like, you really can get up and, up and running with very little issues. Exactly. And so... Something that we're hearing more and more about are these, you know, great printers at a low cost, you know, like the, the frozen the and cubics that, you know, we see doctors using more and more. Are they, are they worth the hype? Like if someone comes in, it's like, all right, I'm choosing between, you know, form labs or a SIGA versus a, uh, you know, any cubic. What, Absolutely. Like, um, can I, you can we go into the slide that has the, the dental technologies on it? Can I share my screen? That sure, has yeah, that? Let's, let's do it's that. Actually uh, a perfect, yeah, that's a perfect segue to, to this part. Sure. So why don't you share your screen? And so one thing that Kai really wanted to touch on is, you know, the slide here. Um, you might want to shift over to a slideshow because we can see uh, your whole oh, one screen second. there. Um, but talking about the three different uh, or several different types of printers, you know, they're DLP or SLA. Uh, so once Kai shared the screen there, they has a couple of really good images to show, here we go, LCD, SLA, DLP, um, and just kind of the pros and cons of each, because we get asked this a lot uh, at the design center when we're, um, um, when doctors are looking for printers. Perfect. So, and so Kai, why don't you walk us through this? Thank you. Um, there's three major 3D printing technologies that every dentist needs to be aware of, and it dramatically affects the quality um, and the consistency of your prints. On the low end, on the on the left hand side is LCD. LCD, um, and they're all based off of the light source on on how the light cures the resin. So LCD is basically the same thing that's in your TV screen, the same thing that's in your computer monitor, the same thing that's in your iPad. It's basically a screen that emits um, ultraviolet light to cure um, the resin. Um, the pros is it's super affordable. Like you can get those for a couple thousand dollars, like like $2,000. I think the, 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 the frozens are in that price range. Um, they have a large for build like $300. Yeah, so, some of them you can. Um, yeah. The, like, like I have Creality. So um, I have a Creality that is three, like 280. And the Elgu Mars is also uh, $200. Um, but they're, so they go from a couple hundred to a couple thousand. So it's typically maybe 200 to $2,000 for the, the LCD ones. Um, they have, they actually have the highest resolution. You can get on an XY um, resolution, like 30 microns on an LCD screen. I mean, it's, it's massive. Uh, uh, Frozen has a new AK, you know, so it's super, super high resolution. Um, on that note, you own the ideal resolution for dental specifically is 60 microns. You don't need anything less than 60 for micron. 30 um, microns is used for jewelry or super or, or fine manufacturing. Um, mm -hmm. But for dental, um, 60 microns is what you need. And and every and almost every one of these has technologies in that 60 micron um, uh, level. Mm -hmm. But um, the, the benefits to the LCD ones are, are very affordable. Um, as you mentioned, some are a couple hundred. Um, but most of the, even the, the, the dental LCD ones are, are a couple of thousand um, because yeah. um, the, you, you need the hardware to be robust enough to handle the, the super thick resins. The thicker the resins, the, the more pressures that you're going to have. And so, so it needs to be very, very well built. The biggest cons is there's 
almost there's very very few FDA approved resins to work with any LCD printer. The only one that I know of is is frozen. Mm -hmm. uh, frozen is specifically certified by Keystone to work with their resins. Um, I don't um, I don't know if if I, I'm pretty sure Creality and Elgo is not. Um, if you go on their website, they actually show you um, their their printers. But they but the printer has to specifically not, not just the brand the, the brand and the model has to be specifically certified by that resin to be to maintain that FDA um, to maintain that FDA clearance. Um, so if you buy a frozen, it has to be the frozen dental one that that um, was certified. It can't be one of the other frozen printers. It has to be that exact one. Um, lifespan, LCD lifespans are super short. Um, you can have dead pixels. You can have discoloration. Um, you can have cracking. Um, my, I, I have a Creality LCD screen, one that we were using for some dental models because you know that wasn't actually being used um, in the mouth. And it, it's already broken um, several times. Um, and then repeatability. Um, the biggest thing about the cheap ones or, or the less expensive consumer grade is repeatability. You may have one that was super accurate and perfect, but the next one may not. And it's just because the equipment wasn't made to the precision needed to have a perfect print every single time. And again, in, in dental, we're talking 60 microns, which is, is fairly small. Um, and the, the, the other one is, and this is something that, that happens a lot, is, is it's a 405 nanometer wavelength. Uh, I'll go into that later, but the 405 is not what you want to be using for dental, especially anything that goes in their mouth. The only thing that I would use an LCD printer for is dental models or a bite or, or the, the bite splint, the keystone bite splint. But anything other than that, like um, dentures, um, crowns, tooth material, like any of the new um, surgical guides, any of the new more advanced stuff, Actually, surgical guides, uh, I, I would do an LCD screen one. Um, next okay, one um, is, is S Kai, I'm going to oh, just quickly jump in. I was just doing a time check. Um, we have like three to five minutes left. We've kind of flown through this time. So just time check and let's, yep. um, for, Thank for this you. part. So the next one is SLA. Uh, Form Labs is the major company that does that. It's also affordable. It's like three to $4,000. Um, they have many more FDA approved resins. Um, but they have lower, they have the lowest resolutions. It's typically 80 to hundred, some might be 60, but you typically have the lowest resolution at SLA. The biggest one is DLP. And that is where a vast majority of all dental printers are. They're, they're all DLP. Um, and specifically they're 385 nanometer DLP. And that's the Sega's, the Sprint Raised and Vision Tech, the um, Shining 3D, um, next end like they're all they're all dlp but they're all more expensive and that's where you're going like on the cheap side is like five thousand dollars is the cheapest dlp printer that i know of on the high side is twenty twenty five thousand dollars maybe even more than that um for for dlp but those are the the, the 3d printing technologies got it okay um that's uh, that actually is really informative because i always get i would i was always getting a little confused between the different the different types of those images were great um, so a few more questions we can probably get in here. Uh, so it, it seems like there's a new resin, a new printer coming out, you know, every week, but with the different companies that are out there, who are the companies that are kind of pushing the boundaries that are innovating the most, you know, and in your opinion, like, who do we have or who should we be watching out for? So hands down is desktop health. Um, has desktop health just bought out Envision Tech. So it's, so sometimes you heard Envision Tech, sometimes you heard desktop health in the middle of rebranding. Desktop health, um, along with desktop metal combined, they are the second largest 3D printing company in the world period, only behind Stratasys. Mm -hmm. And they um, are putting tens and tens of millions of dollars into resin development. Uh, I, I got on the phone with Kevin, um, one of their, their product managers. They have about 10 to 30 new resins coming out. And mm. it's exciting. They have 3D printable directly printed um, clear liners. They have a new Flex Sarah Smile Ultimate that's coming out that's supposed to be like a true permanent material. Um, they, last year, they released Flex Sarah Smile and Flex Sarah Base. They have by far the most, many, uh, most materials coming out. The next one that I would say is, is there's dozens of independent third-party manufacturers coming up with their own resins. Graphy is a huge one. Graphy has, they already have the world's first FDA-approved 
crown material and it's an actual permanent material that you can make crowns with. Um, they are also they also released the world's first directly printed clear liner material that that hasn't been FDA approved yet, but they're going to get FDA approved in spring of 2022. And once you can start directly printing clear liners, I, I think this is going to really take off um, yeah, as far sure. as, as a consumer market. Um, but desktop health also has their own clear liner material that they're that they're developing. So by next year, you're going to have at least two manufacturers that have FDA approved um, clear liner materials. Yeah, that, that's definitely going to be a game changer. So you, you say to look out for clear liners and, and permanent crowns. That's that's your prediction. The, oh, that's hundred percent. That is that is the gold. That is the holy grail that every manufacturer wants. And that's top metal. I know for a fact they are imminently going to be releasing FDA approved versions for both of them. And mm -hmm. Graphy already has FDA clearance for their crown. And Graphy already released their clear liner. It just is pending FDA approval right now. Yeah, those are the, the big ones to watch out for. That's going to happen. 20, 2022 is going to be an amazing year for all of this. Uh, but I'm, I'm looking at the time. Uh, we are a minute over. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, there's so much to follow here that, you know, Kai, you're going to have to come back and uh, we're going to have to keep chatting about this because, you know, there's, there's something new all the time. Um, so Kai, thank you so much for uh, taking the time today for chatting with us and answering our questions and kind of clarifying some things about 3D printers. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Chloe. And then I'm gonna answer um, some of the questions in, in text after this. Okay, fantastic, thank awesome. you so much. And if you do have any questions, you reach out to myself or Kai, it's simply 3D Hawaii, and uh, he'll be happy to uh, connect with you and answer your questions. So uh, we have a poll up here, uh, feel free to click on that and uh, have a great day, everyone, and have a great weekend. Awesome. Thank you. Bye, Chloe. Bye, everyone. Bye.